tuned for how to calibrate your projector. It is not as scary as it seems. This is Kim. This is my channel, Dorothy's Daughter. I'm glad you could join us today. I am today going to talk about calibrating the projector. So you've gone and you've bought the projector, you've picked your mount, and you've decided on where you're going to locate that projector. So now what? So now we have it hung up, we have, or mounted, or however you're going to put it, or set on the table, and you're going to uh, start to cut patterns with your projector. But first, I want to say thank you to my new subscribers and just remind you that if you haven't subscribed, you might be missing out on some really fun and useful videos. So go ahead and click that subscribe link down below. I am, as of today, 13,975. So if you'd like to help me to get to 14,000 today, click that button. Anyway, I want you right now to put it out of your head, the thought that it's too hard or too scary. I have read so many posts of people who bought their projector and months later it's still sitting in the box because they're too afraid to calibrate it. Let me tell you, for me it took 15 minutes, literally 15 minutes and it wasn't hard at all. You have to just decide for yourself. All, all you're doing is telling your computer or iPad or whatever you're going to use to send the image to your projector. All you're doing is telling it how much to zoom. That's basically all there is to it. So you just have to fiddle until you get that just right. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer than others and there are a lot of factors. So I'm going to go through some steps to make that a little bit easier. And if things aren't lined up, you know, some things you can do to make it a little bit easier even still. So before though, I say too much about that. I also want to say everybody always writes me and wants to know what I'm wearing in these videos. So this is the Metro Blazer, the new one from Love Notions. If you watched my video, which was last week on the Metro Blazer, I'm in love with this pattern. And this is actually the one I was making in the video. So um, this is the third one I've made and I know it will not be the last. This is a pattern that Love Notion really hit out of the park. It's probably my favorite pattern release since I've been testing for them. It is fabulous. So it is still on sale until I believe Tuesday. So grab it for $3 off while you can. Today is... So let's go over what you'll need in order to uh, calibrate your projector. Obviously you need a projector and a mount. And I'm assuming you've already decided where you're going to put it based on the space that you have. You're going to need a device to send the image to it, whether that be wired or wireless. Um, I like a wireless system, so I use my iPad and it's real easy and works really well. If you're going to use a computer, that's fine too. And a lot of people use um, Apple TVs or Chromecast or um, you can use an Android or, you know, whatever. I'm not going to go into how they connect because each one is a little bit different. I, I happen to just use iCast for my iPad and it works out really, really great for me. The first thing you need is a level. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily a big heavy duty level like this, but any kind of thing that you can use to make sure your surface is level. Even an app on your phone will work. So if you put the level down and make sure it's in the bubble there. All right, and that tells you that your surface is level. If it's not, you really can't change your table. But what it does is it arms you with some knowledge of what to do if it doesn't line up properly. Then you know that you might have to tilt a certain way with the projector to get it just right. And you can also put this up against the projector to see if that's level as well. 
The other thing you really need is a buddy and that is someone to adjust the mount of the projector so that it's level with your table and to focus the projector and that kind of thing to get it just right and then um, that is something that you can't do by yourself. You need somebody up there and somebody down here. And the next thing you need is some kind of software or app to display the image to be able to send it to the projector. So there are several out there. I like Affinity Designer, the app on the iPad, and they also have a program for Windows, I think Windows and Mac computers. So you can, it's actually a design program, but you can actually dial in the zoom level, and I'm gonna be showing that to you. You can actually sort of lock it um, in a roundabout way. And in the future, um, we're going to be able to do some pattern adjustments with this program as well. So for right now, the Affinity Designer program is only $10 for the iPad and I think $30 for the, or $35 for the desktop. So it might be an app that you're going to want to get. Now it does not work on an iPhone. I think the only app on an iPhone that will work for for projecting, for sewing, is the XODO Zodo app. And that one works as well, but if you have a phone, you're kind of limited. But if you have an iPad, you could use Zodo or you could use the uh, Affinity Designer. And I think it's probably the best 10 bucks I've spent this year, hands down. A couple of tips that I want to give you before we actually go to the demonstration. First, do you remember the first time you were going to try to sew a garment or the first time you put in a zipper or the first time you made jeans? I'm, I guess I'm going the gamut here of things, levels of difficulty, right? But there's a point in your sewing life where you looked at something and you thought, I'm never going to be able to do that. So let's just say, think about that. Maybe you do it all the time now right? At one time, there's something that you thought was too hard, that you would never be able to do it, that now you do with confidence. That's how projecting was for me. So I thought it was going to be something hard. I made it way too hard than it was. So let's try to simplify it and demystify it just a little bit. But, you know, as I said, the next step after it's mounted, you're going to make sure that your table is level, that the projector is level. All right, you're going to download the image from Projectors for Sewing Facebook group. And if you're not a member of that, you need to be because it's fabulous. You can, in their announcements, there is a post with tons of information, way more than I'm sharing here, that you can use to um, learn about your projector, especially different types and different ones but there is a calibration image there. You want to download that or something like that, okay? So that you have a way, an image that you know the size of it so you can tell how much zoom you need to be so an inch equals an inch, okay? So then you're going to display your calibration image down onto your table, all right? Your cutting mat. Make sure you have a cutting mat with squares on it, one inch squares on it. If, knowing whether or not your table is level and whether or not you have a rectangle box when it shows. Your box should look like a rectangle when it comes up. If it looks like this or like this, you're going to need to adjust the keystone, okay? So do any of that that you need to do to make sure it looks like a box with even sides and even tops, okay? That is number one and that's going to probably avoid most calibration problems. So every projector has a keystone adjustment and it'll look something like this or whatever the button looks like on there. And what you want to do is just move that until you have a box. The reason you get a keystone is if you're not level, if this isn't parallel to this, okay? So if you're sitting in a classroom and there's a projector on the table and it's up here, they have to use the keystone to make that right. Otherwise, it won't be a square anymore. So the same thing applies. If your table is a little off, 
you're probably going to know that you're going to have to mess with the keystone up there. That's why I tell you this will get you information. Okay, so if this is off, you know that's going to be the problem and it isn't something else. Okay, so then you can adjust the tilt as much as you can and then use the keystone adjustment. So now I'm going to take you to a camera that's going to show this view and how I calibrate my projector. All right, so I'm gonna turn my projector on. And soon I'm gonna get a menu screen. All right, now when I get this menu, I'm going to go down and select iOS cast. And I believe if you have a Google Chromecast or an I Android, you're going to use this, but for an iPhone or an iPad, iPad is what I have, you are going to use that. All right. So you're going to click iOS cast. And then you're going to connect on your iPad. So you're going to click this screen mirroring right here and connect Zcast. And now I see my iPad on the table. All right, the next thing I want to do is open Affinity Designer. Okay, and I already have open the calibration image. And this is the image from the projector group. Okay, on here it looks a little different because one, it's zoomed way out, and two, uh, my cutting table is very small. So I'm only going to use just the inner portion of this. But if you have a larger uh, cutting surface, you will use more of it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom this in until the boxes match. All right. So now I've got a pretty good. 16 by 24. It's a little off right here, but I have some buckling in my um, mat that I'm using here. So it's going to look a little bit different. But the 16 by 24 looks, whoop, 16 by 24 looks good. 12 by 12 looks good. 8 by 8 looks good. 1 by 1 looks good. Okay. And then I had shared with you about the small cards that I made and you can download the image. It's not, no rocket science here, but the one I'm showing you actually has my zoom that I, you know, just so I wouldn't forget it, my zoom level. So what that is, um, it's going to be different for you. So once you get it set to where these line up, these line up, and these line up. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull up the navigator panel or whatever program you're using. Um, the program panel here, the navigator panel. I, whoops, I moved it. <laughs> the navigator panel. And you're going to want to check what that is. And then you are able to write that number down. And I'd suggest just write it on your card the way I have. All right. And then I can take this card to any of the squares on my pattern and just do a quick check. And because I can move it around, I don't have to move the fabric around if you have that one inch grid. So basically what I would do is I would go ahead and I'm going to open up then the classic T pattern that I use from Love Notions. You can see that's really hard to see in white with black letters. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to on an iPad, I'm going to show you how to turn, invert the colors with just a few clicks. I'm going to go into my settings and then you want to go into accessibility, which you find right here over on the left accessibility. And then you want to go down to accessibility shortcut 
and you want to choose Classic Invert. And what that will do is when you click your iPad top button three times, it will invert the colors. So let me do this in Affinity Designer. I'm clicking my top button three times. See the colors inverted. So now when I want to display on a fabric that is lighter in color, or I mean, there's a lot of different reasons you might need this contrasty view. One might work better than the other, but for the most part, this inverted view seems to work best for me. So let's go and let's pull up a pattern, okay? It shows up a lot better in this particular view than say this. This definitely does not show up as, as well. The other thing I wanna tell you when you go into Affinity Designer is that you have you know, on a pattern, you'll have all these things, all these layers on. You can go in and you can just click this layers thing here and you can turn off any layer you don't want. And one thing that I do is I go to the one inch grid and rather than delete it, I go up here and I reduce the opacity, the, the opacity. See, when I opened it, it was like this. And I bring it down to like 40, 45% because then that allows you to double check your, your um, zoom level by using this the little index card that I'm gonna show you, all right? And then you just click the full screen and you're good to go. Three clicks on top and the color's inverted. And if the hand tool, whoop, let's make sure the hand tool is on and then when you go to full screen you'll be able to move this all around without affecting your zoom all right now the hand tool let me show you some preferences that you're going to whoop let me show you some preferences in affinity designer that you're going to want to change the minute you open it first of all you open up the little gear wheel up there and you get to general, and the first thing you want to make sure is unchecked is this right here, present on external displays. Make sure that is set to off, all right? If you don't have that off, what will happen is that what you see on your fabric will be uh, a second monitor type thing. Um, when you have two monitors side by side, you can move things over and it'll continue on the other one. So you won't be able to, uh, it won't mirror what's on your iPad, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you definitely want to turn that off. Okay, and then you go down to tools and you want to make sure this, enable hand tool for accessibility, you want to make sure that is on. And the hand tool, what that does for you is if the hand tool is on, you can take one finger and zoom all around without affecting your zoom level, all right? So let me pull up the navigator panel. This is 72. I can zoom everywhere like this and it's not going to change. It's still 72. But if I didn't have that on, let's just select another tool. Okay, so if I did, didn't have that, whoop. If I didn't have that on, I could scroll around and it will just kind of, if you don't, if you don't be real, whoop, if you're not real careful about what you're doing, you can, you know, make the zoom level move. So you don't want to do that and see it's way up to 165. So if you accidentally do that, though, it's easy just to click right there and type in your zoom level right there. Now, keep in mind, 72 is for my setup. Yours may be completely different because it's based on how far away your projector is, what kind of projector you have, and what kind of cutting table you have. So you might, you know, you want to write that down after you calibrate. You want to write down that down so you can actually find it again. And for a while, I find myself checking it just about with every pattern just to make sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. After a while, I think I'll probably trust it more. But... Okay, so I have inverted the colors. I'm able to see the, co the colors now. It's maybe hard to view um, in your 
it's not real, real dark in here, but I can see them really well. You can see them if you look at this card. Because I left the one inch grid on, but just behind the scenes and took the opacity down, I'm able to put this down at any time, any place, and check four squares, okay? And I think that's a way to check if you're a little bit unsure of what you're doing, you can check that as much as you need to. As long as you have that one inch grid on, you can do that. Now, some patterns only have just one inch somewhere or maybe a three inch square. Then you can just use this and try to check those one inch or three inch squares. Um, but I really, really like to leave the grid on, but just uh, lower the opacity of it just a little bit. Now let me show you the same thing in Zoto. And it looks, looks weird because I still have the colors inverted. The Zoto app here. All right, I am going to go and open something. I'm gonna, my thing I'm doing right now is the Ruby Peacoat from five out of four. So let me open that. So now on Zoto, you can go up in the view settings and you can turn on the dark mode, which you don't have to do it to the iPad. You can just do it like this. All right. So if you go to the layers option here on Zoto and you've got the grid, it's just on or off. Okay. It's on, but you're not able to See it real well on the projector. You can can kind of see it, but not really well. But you're able to though on the search. You're able to go ahead and do 72 or whatever yours is, and then these should line up, and they do. There's little ticks if you see. I don't know if you can see that, but there are little ticks where the corners of the squares are. You almost have to be in person, but it does line up. Keep in mind, yours is not going to be 72. And you can go ahead and just click and get that out of there. And then, but there's no lock on this. So you have to just be very careful when you zoom so that you don't change it. Okay, so let me see if my See, it's not as easy to change though, but see, I've already changed it by zooming. So be careful with that. But if you get off, you can go up to this little magnifying glass and type in whatever your zoom level is. Remember, that's not going to be the same for you as it is for me. It's just going to be however, when you did your calibration, however much you had to zoom it, that is what you're going to use. All right, so there we go. That would be, and I think it's a little bit brighter on Zoto versus Affinity. Let me show you. Affinity's maybe not. Oh, well, this is a different pattern. Let me open the same pattern. Okay. Obviously I have to turn it on its side, put in my amount of zoom here. And go full screen. Whoop. Put the hand tool on. And go full screen. And I can move it around. And yeah, it's just, it was just the file. I guess these are just brighter patterns, which is nice. So there you go. That is how you're calibrated. If you can do all those things and see, I think the background shows up more so it can just line those up and there they are. They, they're perfect. All right. That is how you calibrate. And this shows up really well on any fabric. Um, let me show you a dark piece of fabric. This is what's left from the blazer I'm wearing. 
You can see how well that shows up, even on the dark fabric. If you have to, you can get rid of the print so you can see better, like, you know, fold it so the print's inside. That's dark fabric. Let me show you some lighter fabric. Here's some lighter fabric. As you can see, that really shows up well. So that'll just help you just get going and calibrated. Next time I'm going to go ahead and show you how to cut, how to move it if the piece is too large for the area, and basically just get your confidence. Okay, that's it. All right, so there's one thing I want to show you. I refer to an index card that I use. I'm actually going to take my percent off of here and get, make this available for you to download so you can write in your level of zoom right on this card and have that little calibration check I was talking about in the video. I will have a link to that in the description for you. And then I would highly recommend making sure you write down your level of zoom for your setting. Remember, this 72% is for my room, my table, my projector. Everybody's is gonna be different. So write yours down right on this card. Download the card and then you'll have this for a one inch check. Again, make sure you print this at 100%, just like you do patterns, okay? Because you don't want it to be smaller or larger than an inch. And you can check it with a ruler just to make sure after it's printed. And then you'll have that to spot check. And as long as you have that one inch grid on, you can check it anywhere. And I really love when they have that grid. If they don't, you still have one inch little things around the pattern that you can check. Or you can go into Affinity Designer and add that, which is what I have done with a few patterns. If they didn't have a grid, I sometimes will just put a one inch square on them. Easy to do in the software and then you have, you have available places to check. So now you are totally calibrated and ready to cut out your first pattern with a projector. My next video is going to be just that. I'm going to take you through cutting out a pattern and show you what to do if the pattern goes off of the, the image and how you have to, when you have to move something because the pattern piece is too big. There's a, just a few little tips like that. But man, if you get this down, you are golden and you're going to love your projector so much. There's nothing quite as cool as being able to have your pattern ready to go and like this is 10 minutes and then the rest of it is sewing time. So a t-shirt that takes you two hours to make might only take you two hours and 15 minutes. Pretty good. Especially the more I do it, the more confident I get about it, the more I um, know what to the checks and balances of knowing to double check the zoom and all those things, you're probably going to make a mistake because let's face it, we all do. But you are calibrated and you are ready to set free on making your clothes with the projector. So I hope that helps you. I uh, will answer any questions I can down in the comments and uh, be sure to stay tuned for the, I think I'm going to have three or four more parts to this. And hopefully y'all are going to be teaching me on the Facebook page because that's where I've learned everything I know pretty much is from that Facebook group. So if you're not signed up for that, you really should be. So I hope that helps. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the weekend and happy projecting and happy sewing. Praise the squad! Praise the squad! Oh,